This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Okay. What is a labor minimum? Sometimes you'll write an estimate uh, for repairs, for a minor repair. You go out to the, the homeowner's house and they're very, very worried that maybe they had um, some severe damage to the roof. Maybe they had a water spot on the ceiling or something like that. Turns out um, it was just you had some high winds and heavy rains and the storm blew the, the rain the wrong way up the, the roof and it got underneath a piece of flashing just as sustained heavy winds for a couple of hours maybe, right? And with heavy rain and it drips in and drips in and drips in and then you've got like a water spot on the ceiling, right? Uh, maybe one shingle blew off at some point on the roof, but the whole roof as a whole that just truly does not need to be replaced. It's absolutely repairable. The customary and reasonable thing to do is just to fix the, fix the place where the, the shingles were damaged, right? Maybe you have one shingle damaged. Are you gonna be able to get a roofing contractor to come out to the house for one shingle, right? And the answer is, of course not. You know, maybe you'd want to do it yourself. Maybe you want to jump onto YouTube and, you know, as a homeowner and uh, pull the old shingle out and stick a new one in, right? Maybe you've got, the, maybe the, the roofer left you some bundles of shingles and you got them up, you know, the attic in your garage, which a lot of people do, by the way, um, if you're an adjuster watching this. Um, so what does that look like, right? Let's take a look here. If you look at um, one shingle, RFG, let's say a 30-year uh, shingle, 300E, right? Installed is $31.73, right? That's, nobody's coming to your house to do that, right? And you may, maybe you add in like a um, steep charge or whatever, because it's a 712, which you can't do like the whole roof as a steep charge. You can really only do like one square because they're, they're only gonna do one shingle, right? So your, your grand total on your roof estimate is $110, right? Actually, I'm gonna delete all this because this is gonna affect what I talk about here. So, cool thing about Xactimate is that, you know, there's there's a, it, it already knows, Xactimate already knows, and this is price list specific, which is zip code specific. It already knows that there's a minimum amount of money that a roofer or a drywaller or whoever is gonna, is gonna charge to come out to the house, right? So we go up to labor minimums, right? And you're gonna see all of these labor minimums, right? What, what uh, Xactimate did here is it said, all right, we have a roofing labor minimum. For this particular price list, the base amount that any roofer is gonna come to the house to do anything at your house is $703.36, so right? So you have one shingle missing and then you've got one square steep, and, steep charge, right? Doesn't matter. Xactimate's gonna run it up to $703, right? Because you already have $110 in there, right? We decided about 110 bucks. Um, it's gonna add $637 to that to get it up to 700 bucks, right? So when you go to, to look at your um, final estimate, you put in 110 bucks and Xactimate is gonna estimate $703, so it's an adjust your roof estimate uh, up to 700 bucks for the, for the labor minimum, right? Um, and that goes for all different kinds of things. In this particular estimate, there's, there's a whole bunch of them, right? And some of them you might see that there's like on this, let's see, uh, water extraction remediation, um, the labor minimum here is 150 bucks, but it does, it's not putting in any, any adjusted amount, um, no RCV amount, none of that stuff because the water extraction uh, remediation labor minimum was exceeded already. I'm not sure what it is in the estimate, but it's more than 150 bucks. So when you go over the labor minimum, it's not applied. There's no adjustment for that, right? Does that make sense? Um, labor minimums are something that insurance companies uh, want you to pay a lot of attention to. And the reason why is because, especially on things like some drywall, right? So it's, a, it's like a two to a four foot square water spot, right? You're not replacing the whole ceiling, you're just doing a little spot there, right? It's on the ceiling and then the attic is blown in insulation, right? Which is gonna come down um, when you uh, 
pull that drywall down. It's just this the way it is, right? It's just gravity. Um, and then there's some there's going to be some paint. So we have we're going to seal the area. So we'll seal like a eight like a double the size of it. So we'll do an eight square foot area, right? And then we'll do a um, paint the ceiling. Sorry, PNTP, just the ceiling in this room, right? And maybe there's some there's uh, some shelves and some like uh, shoe racks and things. This is a mud room, right? So there, maybe there's some things, some furniture in there that needs to be moved out, right? So then we'll have like a contents small room, right? This is a $97 estimate, right? Um, the, the, and with the, the insurance companies, no matter what size this is, as long as it's you know below, at or below the labor minimum, um, one thing that you'll notice in here, if you go into the, the quick entry, uh, is that where it says unit price, there's a minimum group, right? So drywall is the minimum group here on drywall, right? Because this is a drywall line item. The question you have to ask yourself is, is is there going to be an insulation guy, a drywall guy, a painter, and then like a laborer to, to do this, right? So each one of these, if you watch the labor minimum group, the minimum group here has goes to its own trade, right? So and if you if because these have their own trades, each one of them is going to come up as a labor minimum, right? So what the insurance companies want you to do, and this is something that they will have you, you know, when you go to your, your carrier certifications and things like that, they're going to say, please address labor minimums, right? So they want they don't want you to have a drywall labor minimum, a, an insulation labor minimum, a paint labor minimum, and then a labor uh, labor labor minimum for something where probably one person or maybe two at the most from the same company are going to do all the work, right? So who's that person, right? Who's going to do that that kind of work? In this case. Probably a painter, right? So we would say um, select all of these because they're not going to bring in a, 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 a third person or another company to move stuff out of the room. So we would select all those, go to global changes, go to labor minimum, and we would change this to paint, right? So now when we go back and look at these drywalls at paint, because it's basically just cutting out four square feet, insulations at paint. Right, the painter's going to do it. Um, painter is doing the paint. Painter is going to move the stuff out of the room. Right. This is this is the kind of the, the heart and soul of labor minimums. It's one of those things that um, um, contractors will give you a little bit of grief on. And when you're doing a reconciliation or a negotiation on an estimate, um, look at the labor minimums that they have in there. They may not have reassociated trades with the appropriate person. They may have like a gazillion labor minimums for a whole bunch of different things. They could add several thousand dollars to an estimate. And maybe some of that stuff's legitimate, right? But you're going to have to go through it and, and make it informed and educated, um, reasonable assessment of like, well, are you really going to have like a separate person come in to move the furniture out of the room or to write? You're not going to do that. So let's think critically about this stuff. And um, when, you, when you're doing your estimates, and again, Insurance companies, this is a big deal for them because they, they, they look at the amount of money they get spent on paying for labor minimums that for things that they really shouldn't be. Like if the homeowner was just doing the work on their own, they wouldn't be paying all these labor minimums for this stuff. But the insurance company gets on the hook for it because the adjusters don't know, right? They, they maybe don't understand this or they forget um, or the file review doesn't send it back for that or whatever, right? Um, so that's kind of labor minimums in a, in a nutshell. Um, we want to write the right amount for the estimates, not like, you know, it's it's not good customer service to, to overwrite estimates, and it's not in anybody's be best interest to underwrite or not to pay exactly what we owe to, to get the, the house to pre-loss condition. So that's what we're after, and this labor minimums, labor minimums is a big part of that. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at AdjusterTVPlus.com.